Yeah, All way. right, take two <laughs> from the improvisers, the education committee. Here we are. Uh, we are live from my personal page. My name is Amanda Boren. I'm the education director at the LPO, and I'm so excited to be joined by these lovely people. Um, the education committee, I call them the best committee because they come up with amazing ideas, and we've done so many things in the past at least a decade that I've been with this organization. So we did this once before, but I think just to ourselves in our private Zoom meeting. So we're gonna do this one more time, but you know, I'm gonna reverse the order this time. So we're gonna start with Ava. <laughs> Hello, Ava, tell us about yourself. <laughs> okay. My name is Ava and um, I play violin at the LPO. I'm from Costa Rica and um, I joined the LPO Education Committee because at the beginning, my first year, because it was the only committee that you could join um, without having tenure. So like, I really liked the idea of just getting on board of, you know, participating on the activities for education and planning concerts. That was very interesting to me. And so, um, and I think the education is a, a really important thing, especially arts education, not only music, but arts um, uh, in the formation of, of people. It doesn't matter if they're not going to be musicians professionally, but I, I think that arts are a crucial part for expression of the, the individual. And so um, I think it's very important that the, the work that we do, uh, teaching kids and all the different programs that we have at the LPO Education uh, program and also I joined right after Amanda joined uh, as head of education um, and she is definitely the person that puts everything together we all participate and give ideas but she's the person that makes everything run so thank you so much for that Amanda thank you Ava that's really sweet um, all right well how about John John one of our founders the LPO my name is John and I'm a clarinetist <laughs> <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, uh, yeah, I was one of the I'm one of the dinosaurs, along with Kent, I guess, and who started the orchestra. And when we did, we wanted to make sure that the the children of the at least the tri parish area, who had been sort of left behind with with the previous organization, uh, the previous orchestra's um, education efforts, we wanted to make up for that, and so. We were um, so excited that we could do anything that we wanted, and we have over the past 30 years. Um, and I've been involved with the Education Committee pretty much all that time. And I was very excited when we did hire Amanda, because she was one of my students at Loyola. It's and true. I taught her how to play oboe <laughs> and bassoon and saxophone. And didn't you and regret it in the moment? She anymore. She works for, with us for L, at LPO. I'm just so lucky to have her. So there you go. Thanks, John. Um, all right, how about Kurt wearing one of my favorite color schemes in the Play Dat series, the black and gold. That was our, yeah. our 2019 Play Dat. Yeah, this is, this is what the participants got. So, mm -hmm. uh, don't ask me how I got this shirt. <laughs> Kurt, how'd you get so, that shirt? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kurt. I'm a violinist. <laughs> and I joined the education committee because of the people in it. I mean, everybody on the committee is a, a fantastic educator in their own right. And to learn from people like, you know, Kent and John who, and, and Amanda, who've done so much for the education program in LPO, um, I just wanted to sign up immediately and learn from them. And, um, and I really am passionate about education because it was the BSO, Boston Symphony Orchestra's education concerts that made me fall in love with the idea of pursuing a, a career in music and um, really understanding what it takes and how beautiful music can be. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, how about Michael? Hey, I'm Michael. I play bassoon in the LPO. Uh, been a member of the education committee like Ava since almost since I joined the orchestra because uh, it's really fun to get involved and you know the extent to which we on the education committee uh, 
not just have input, but are able to you know, create and shape the educational programming that Arkstra presents is really a unique opportunity in our field. Uh, when I talk to my friends who are in other orchestras about the kind of stuff we can do and you know, the kind of programs we can just invent and with Amanda's uh, expert guidance execute, uh, you know, always most people away. So uh, the reason I wanted to join the education committee was because uh, like everybody else said, uh, you know, I started playing instruments through public school and uh, the, the opportunity that was afforded me by my public school music program, you know, I, I uh, we, we were asked to do either band, orchestra, or choir for years. Mm -hmm. um, and I chose band uh, because the year before they had taken us to a Plano Symphony concert where uh, much in the vein of our young people's concerts, all the instruments were introduced and highlighted. And uh, we really got a sense for, you know, not just what are these instruments in the abstract, what does it all do together? And we could all kind of see our, or I could really see myself being part of that. Uh, it seemed like a really great um, thing to be involved with. And uh, I think like I said, it's, uh, it's really important that we serve all the students in the area. And we know, you know, our, our colleagues who are in music educators in the schools are being asked to do more and more with less and less uh, every year. So I think mm -hmm. it's uh, imperative that, that arts institutions, big arts institutions in the city, especially you know, an orchestra, um, you know, play a role in that and really make sure that uh, everybody, every child in the city has a chance to see themselves, uh, imagine themselves on stage and imagine themselves being able to express themselves and learn more about themselves through uh, an art. Awesome, love that. Um, Rebecca, our newest yeah. member, so I am on staff with the LPO. Um, I am, I came on when, um, to help out when Amanda was on maternity leave um, and then just loved it so much that they couldn't get me to leave. Um, I'm super excited to be here. When I was um, pretending I was Amanda, um, I was working with the education concerts and it was great to see it from the other side because I've been taking um, my students um, when I was a music teacher to those concerts. So I kind of got have gotten to see the whole spectrum of what the LPO can offer. I've also been a teacher who has worked with the Music for Life program. Um, and like everybody has been saying, growing like public schools can, um, these, these programs are just so wonderful to offer an extra hand, um, an extra mentor, an extra voice to students who are learning music because, um, you know, it just takes that one teacher who says something the right way to just spark this joy and beauty in a child. And so getting getting the opportunity to have orchestra members in my classroom not only made me feel like I was, I was able to offer more um, quality education, I think it made the students feel like they, they were, you know, real musicians. And that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Awesome. All right. Last but not least, Kent. Well, um, like a lot of people have said, I learned in fifth, <clears throat> and in fifth grade, you had to play an instrument, but they didn't have so many string instruments. So they selected a few kids that they would let out of certain classes. I wasn't, I wasn't terrible at school, so they let me, <laughs> you know, skip out for a couple of days in a week. And I had to learn from a general music teacher who had really long nails and a beehive hairdo. And there's no way she was going to demonstrate anything, but she just at the, at the piano and said, look at the books and, and <laughs> play your open strings. But uh, it was, it was, it was fun. And, uh, Eventually, uh, you know, when I went to junior high school, uh, we had a really good orchestra director, and uh, he was a really talented violinist. And I was pretty critical then, and but he really played beautifully. And uh, uh, I think his brother was playing in the Minnesota Orchestra. Mm. I later played in the Greater Twin Cities Youth Orchestra with uh, his nephew. He told, and we heard stories about my very proper orchestra teachers swearing at his brother and vacation and stuff. But anyway, it was, a, it was a good experience. And I think that all of us know that people learn different ways. And I think without music and art and these other offerings in the public schools, we lose a lot of students who don't learn from a book. You know, I think by focusing more and more on the core curriculum ideas 
and mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. like you have these new programs every five years no child left untested you know <laughs> whatever you know common core all these different things and it's just it's just doubling down on, on, on not stimulating mm -hmm. students and i think that um I think we all went to, to school with people who were saved by their experience in art or in music or even athletics. You know, you see that with some kids, the only reason they're going to stay in school is because they want to play football or something, you know. And uh, the, the variety of offerings is really key. And I think that music has a real immediate uh, impact to just about everybody. I think it's something that, that all of our memories are somehow tied to its a song that was popular then or, or music is the soundtrack of, of a lot of our memories and mm -hmm. i think part of our best experiences with school it was for me and i think it was for many of us so yeah i, I mean that's interesting to say music is the soundtrack you know that song that hooked us this is going to sound so silly and the song that hooked me i remember playing in is sixth grade violin orchestra so obviously a really great sounding group and uh in public school we're all beginners and we were playing stand by me and we had just learned how to shift to third position okay so another really great sound for beginning violins but it was like i was like oh my gosh this is exactly what's on the radio i am playing the radio and it was this the i i think that was like what really got me into the next a tier of wanting to really play violin so yeah when I was younger I, I was I learned to play can't get no satisfaction like yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So that's a great question I'm curious what everybody else's first song that they remember just really being like yeah yeah I'm playing <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure. oh, sorry oh, go ahead go ahead John no, it was, it was a, the Stranger on the Shore was actually mm. a top 40 clarinet song. I mean, that's how long ago it was. Mm -hmm. What do you have, Ava? I don't think I had like a song that I actually played on the violin because I started like, I don't know, playing like little country songs or whatever. But it was, oh, I think more than the song, it was like the company because it was like my, my friends from class. So it was having a good time for sure like it's mm -hmm. i think it's always related to to being happy or satisfied or like uplifting feelings more than the song yeah like a fulfillment. Was, she's a social butterfly so she just wanted to be with everybody <laughs> so <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> um cool oh michael or kent or sorry kurt do you guys have a a song that hooked you where you're like yeah i'm gonna I keep doing this <laughs> when i got to the point with the bassoon that i could i mean you know bassoonists are pretty nerdy uh so <laughs> prefacing this uh i'll just kick out the theme from the 1996 motion picture star trek first contact um i remember that being very uh you know i, I was really just at the peak like can i can i get any better than this right no that, that <laughs> that's exactly the feeling i'm trying to just that i was trying to describe earlier that's awesome. And we got to play that again at one of our family concerts. So you got yeah. to relive that moment. Made my career. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Truly. I, I think a lot of kids who play an instrument, mm -hmm. the music that they play on the instrument, like the Suzuki books, kind of is goes in a different direction as the music they listen to at home that they really love. And that's what, when I was a kid, I listened to like now that's what I call music five and like you yeah. too. And like that was the music that like spoke to me. Mm -hmm. But I went home and I practiced my Suzuki book too because, you know, I knew that was like eating your veggies. And it wasn't until along maybe in middle school or high school where those two things like started to merge. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that's true with a lot of my students. Like they really want to play this game that uh, this video game music. Mm -hmm. And I say, you can play that, but first you have to play your Suzuki. Right. Right. I should say we do have two other um, members on our committee that couldn't join us tonight um, because I, you could, because you bring up that video game thing. And that's something that happened this summer. Um, Paul Macris was doing that with one of his students. They were basically sending video postcards to each other of them just playing different melodies that they were hearing in video games just so they could keep 
playing and it was it was awesome um because yeah, it's just elaborate. such a strange yeah yeah go to ahead Becca elaborate on that because Paul was sending me the the like I was the middleman between the videos and they did the video game one and it was this um cellist um and then Paul's next video challenge was what's your most and like what's the commercial jingle that annoys you the most <laughs> and so they each recorded the the commercial jingle that annoyed them the most which i thought was hilarious but this this little cellist probably fifth sixth grade was mm -hmm. figuring it all out by ear which is so mm -hmm. cool this is like at the very beginning of the pandemic but if i can make one more point i think it's really interesting because my favorite song or the song that was like really cool was mm -hmm. i think it was um uh, I heard it through the grapevine oh, um, yeah. and I think we played it in like middle school or something, but we had these people who dress up as grapes who danced around. Yeah. Too. The California yeah. raisins. Yeah. <laughs> That's who sings that song. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but yeah. it's interesting, like to Kurt's point, like all of us, almost all of us, our first song that got us was not a classical tune. And then we were able to learn a, like some sort of appreciation as the music developed and got a little bit more complex mm -hmm. to really mm -hmm. like transfer that into into the classical music that we were learning so I think that's really interesting as yeah. like educators like that you know you got you find the hook mm -hmm. yeah I've done you know I, I do youth orchestra like elementary string orchestras for greater New Orleans youth orchestras and I I shamelessly give them candy I've <laughs> done video games stuff uh what was it feel it still it was the, yeah i know you had uh, the arrangements for firework that you were katie so yeah, Katy perry katie perry and i actually i had to black out the little notes at the bottom because there was little <laughs> unmentionable <laughs> words on there oh man yeah, fuss at me but uh mm -hmm. the song's clean but it was just a snarky comment that was mm -hmm. not but uh yeah I, I i did a lot of cold play that you know uh mm -hmm. What is what is that? Uh, their big hit, I've forgotten. And we did that to death. Uh, oh, clocks, maybe. Well, we did that one too, but it's uh, dun dun dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, they really like it, and you can find uh, you know arrangements of classical pieces. You know, my kids can't play the you know the real deal, <clears throat> but you can give them. Uh, classical pieces that they've heard too, and uh, and I mix those in. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's in their ear, it's really easy for them to want to work on it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, no, and that's that's but, what Stand by Me got me. It got me, and look at me now. <laughs> that, could be, that could be an interesting uh, transition into uh, family concerts because if it's yes. in their ear, yeah, I, I think we should share some of the some of the programming that we do or have done. Um, so yeah, family concerts. Did, did you want to talk about that, Becca? Or who, who wanted to share about it? Michael, maybe? was one Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what we've done. Yeah. Just to follow what Kent said, I think the familiarity is, is mm -hmm. such a key aspect, you know, to appreciate in classical music. If somebody's coming to it with no previous exposure, you know, there's instruments and tone colors you've never heard before. The music is probably rhythmically and harmonically more complex than what you listen to on the radio, depending on what you like. Uh, and just, you know, any little foothold we can give people, oh, well, you know, we played, you know, this Dua Lipa song that Kent's talking about giving his kids, but it's in the orchestral idiom and it has classical sound. So, you know, that makes it a little easier for them to appreciate the next thing. Um, so I think, you know, there's, there's merit in the candy. And mm -hmm. our family concerts are a great <laughs> way for everybody in the New Orleans area not just kids, uh, but parents and everybody else too, to learn about classical music in a fun, uh, non-judgmental, uh, I mean, our concerts are always non-judgmental, but a very low-key environment. Like this is the one you can bring your, your small child to and it starts yeah. crying. Screaming cool. babies welcome at Screaming the, babies the family. <laughs> Screaming babies encouraged, yes. So we, no, we, yeah. we encourage clapping in between movements at our family concerts, absolutely. Dancing um, in the aisles. Dancing uh, in the aisles. Dancing on stage if the conductor invites you. It <laughs> happens every year. Depending on the conductor, yes. So we do we do yes. at least three of these family concerts a year. They're always free for the kids and pretty low cost for the parents too. Um, and they're almost always um, you know standing room only. 
Uh, we, mm -hmm. We've had really great turnouts at a lot of these before. And we've done all kinds of great themes. You know, we've done, we do the Halloween spooktacular every year. That's kind of the constant. So in, you know, early October. And that's really fun because we play spooky classical music that a lot of people didn't realize it, but they actually do recognize that that piece from Looney Tunes or just pop culture. And uh, we've done fun stuff in the past, like Carlos, uh, our music director, Carlos, did a, a spooky dances where he kind of merged some of the spooky repertoire with some Latin American dances and really is encouraging kids to get up on stage and feel the music with their movements. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of movie stuff too. You know, we have done some Harry Potter theme concerts, uh, science fiction concerts. And so we got that Star with, Trek in there. That's where we got your hook there. Yeah. And a whole Star Wars <laughs> theme one too. With yeah. All, you know, the cosplay guys in the lobby. It was, I don't know, <laughs> all the kids and some of the adults, musicians really appreciate it. Um, but I'm really, I'm also really proud of on our family concerts, how we uh, have committed to working with local composers and commissioning uh, music, uh, new music for mm -hmm. younger audiences. So two of my favorite things we've done, we did a piece by our very own Dave Anderson, uh, who's principal bass in the orchestra and also a very accomplished composer, mm -hmm. uh, called What the Sleepy Animals Do at the Audubon Zoo. And any parents watching uh, of children under a certain age are certainly familiar with this mm -hmm. picture book. Uh, it's, it's a great, funny story. And he wrote some really imaginative music to go with it. And we premiered that piece at the New Orleans Book Festival in uh, City Park. Mm -hmm. And then we played it again on a family and indoor family concert, which is really fun. And we did another one also based on a, a picture book for kids called Louis the Buoy by uh, my favorite New Orleans composer, Tucker Fuller. Uh, it was a really great piece, uh, had had a really good bassoon solo in it too. So I'm a little, <laughs> not a <bit> partial. <laughs> it was really fun that we, you know, let, like I was talking about footholds and familiarity, you know, oh, well, we're doing a piece about Louis the Bowie. I've been reading that to my kids. Like, let's go mm -hmm. check out this piece. And the kids are already familiar with the imagery from the book and they already know the story maybe, or they see the story projected. We do that a lot too. And they can kind of hear the musical cues and just kind of get their imaginations going and making those connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are, um, you know, I feel like those kind of bridge, we have an educational element to those, but it's really about the family fun uh, time at the concert. Yeah. Um, but I do want to talk about two. So there's two programs I had been kind of calling our meat and potatoes, our field trip programs, um, early explorers and our, our young people's concerts that I think a lot of uh, our, our patrons aren't necessarily aware of because they happen at 10 a.m. Monday through Friday when everyone's at work unless they're uh, a teacher at one of our schools that has come and attended these concerts. So I don't know, would one of you want to share about early explorers with the say right, something. Ava? Yeah. Definitely. It's one of my favorites. It's like the for sure the marathon of concerts that we have. Where because we play, I don't know how many, like 20, right? Or something yeah. like that. 20 early explorers. Concerts of the yeah. A so it's amount. definitely a marathon. We at, at the end can almost play it by memory, the decision. <laughs> the orchestra but it has elements that are very important and and the really fun um so the kids come to the venues where we are and um instead of going straight to a concert they get to walk within their group of um their class walk around the venue where we are where musicians set a little station with their instrument and um, they get to sit down and listen for about five minutes of a little presentation of each instrument. So it's basically like a petting zoo of, um, of each instrument. The kids get to ask questions and see the instrument, how it works um, close by. And the musician gets to explain uh, all the special details about the instrument and then um, they go to, I don't know, maybe three or four stations during the mm -hmm. first half hour of the concert. And then they all sit down and the orchestra performs um, a half hour concert that usually has a script that um, fits the curriculum of the schools. Um, usually we have ABCs, we have numbers and we have shapes. Each show is different. And so um, it provides variety for the kids that come like two years in a row, maybe if they come two years in a row. And um, for for me, it's super fun to do the station because 
you get to see a little kid's curiosity and how they ask all these like amazing questions that like really throw you off. Sometimes you're like, oh, I, I never thought about that. <laughs> so it's it's so refreshing to to see those kids and and get to talk to them and interact with them. And it's it's chaotic, but it's organized chaos. And I think that's a fantastic thing for for especially for this kind of thing. So and we we've honed it. I think we've we've got a hang of the early explorers stations and it so yeah, it only took 10 years but we have only, got it now <laughs> yeah. so it's it's great it's great to see it like a like a fine oil machine mm -hmm. um and so i think um that's probably one of the the concerts that we get the most positive feedback from teachers um because it's really for for most of the students are it's like their first um contact with a with an instrument or with a thing you know being in a concert like amanda said being at a hall it's just it's so uh different so i i think as a as a field trip material is definitely very exciting for the kids and for us i think it's it's for me especially it's exhilarating to to work <laughs> closely with the kids and and also to to work um closely with this comedian and creating those scripts and and knowing what the goal is educationally and and see the how interactive it is with the kids also we usually have our guest conductor david torns who, who's done a great job um, shout out you know, to dave yes he's, he's done it for many years and like yeah. like all of us we kind of figure it out and it works fantastically and he's great with the kids and it's for me it's a great experience and i think uh, the kids really enjoy it so it's it's one of the best programs to me yeah awesome thanks ava um how about young people's concerts our, our link up partnership with carnegie does anyone want to share share their memory a favorite young people's concert memory well, she... anyone? <laughs> I can't think of anything actually. <laughs> it's always a great time. I'm all brain dead here. <laughs> I know. It is. So the you know, season, the young sorry, people just kind of build on the work that we, the groundwork we lay with Earth Explorers. So the Earth Explorers is grades kindergarten through second, kind of aimed there. Young people's concert is aimed kind of third, fourth grade up through maybe middle school. Although we actually, I love it. At some of these venues, uh, you know, where we go out in the Geno area to the schools uh, to do these things. So, you know, we'll go. Bring the whole orchestra up to Ponchatoula High School because they have a big enough auditorium and they'll bus in kids from all over that that parish. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Mississippi. And really Pardon? And Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Multiple states. More, Mississippi. more than one state. Yeah. <laughs> and I really love it when the high schoolers from those venues stick around to cut class because they are allowed to to see our show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, it really is great for all ages. Uh, and the YPCs are really fun because they have a participatory element for the audience. So we work with Carnegie Hall has a program called Link Up that is uh, kind of a packaged concert uh, in the that we kind of take and customize to our own needs, uh, to our local audiences and also, you know, to what kind of repertoire we want to play. Uh, but they do a great job of, of providing opportunities for the kids to participate during these programs. So, you know, usually two or three of the pieces we play will have a simplified recorder part written with it. For any who don't remember what a recorder is. <laughs> is a recorder. Yes. Uh, <laughs> my parents grew up calling it a flutophone. So usually when I show it to people, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, so, so there's a few of those pieces that have a simplified part and the kids, you know, we stop the concert for a second and David, our conductor, does a little quick rehearsal with them to make sure they all understand what he's doing. And then we, they literally perform with the LPO and it is always a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it is, as Ava said, you know, organized pandemonium. Or not. Uh, yeah. Some, some of those performances, it's, it's actually oh, sounds like a really nice. We have gotten some really beautiful tone on recorders, you know, and, and, and other sounds as well. And sometimes the sounds appear at all times during the concert, but you know that is part of the learning that happens. Part of the process at that concert. Um, what does the recorder sound like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on, Mike. Give us, give us an excerpt here. Oh. Yeah. 
That's recorded. Hey. Clarinet. I That's will say from the teacher's <laughs> perspective of YPC, um, one of my first years doing it, I think I made maybe like too much of a deal that the kids were performing along with the LPO um, to the point where we were on the bus on the way there. And this is before Music for Life. So it was just me and Amelia. And that's kind of like, we had gotten a grant from Jazz and Heritage Foundation to bring in Amelia, uh, um, violist in the orchestra. But the kids kind of demanded to be paid for the performance. And I was like, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, you that, know what? Like, That's just that smart New Orleans kid that knows yeah. you gotta, yeah. you know, say what you're worth. You yeah, know? they're like, well, Step up. Uh, are they getting paid? Yeah. Well, why are we getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, I'm not sure I've heard that from other students. That's incredible. <laughs> That's great. I remember once. They get these fees. <laughs> <laughs> once we did a, a show about space, and we did. Uh, Claire de Lune and, and Star Trek and you know some classical stuff and some pop stuff but it was all about space and we scored a coup we got a guy to come from the Mississippi test facility from NASA in an astronaut outfit the whole astronaut thing I don't want to say costume but uniform <laughs> and he was great and um and he, and he stuck around. And so at the end of the concert, we did a, a Q and A and the kids were asking him questions. Everything was going great until one kid got the nerve to ask him, how do you go to the bathroom? Mm. And he explained it and we were lost from then on. That's all I could think about. <laughs> and they were... <laughs> so how do we bring him back? Right. Yes. That is always the challenge. Um, so how, yeah, how do we shift from that now to our next uh, <laughs> topic. Now, so two other programs that um, are newer, but I think also just as strong, um, but fall more and we sort of divide our, our, our work into the education side and then community engagement. And two programs that have really grown over the past few years, I would say are Music for Life and Soul Strings and have been really welcomed by the community. We've been able to, we started each of them at one site and have expanded um, to four different sites. So quadrupled the size of the pro, of both of the programs at the same time, uh, much in thanks to all of you that participate and teach and play in these programs. Um, I'm wondering, would any of you wanna share a little bit about Music for Life and tell, tell our audience what that program is about. Sure. Uh, um, I think we're at, at three schools and- Three schools and a community center. And yeah, and, uh, yeah St. Anna's. St. Anna's. Right. And uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's great. I mean, since I learned in the public school system, um, you get ideas of what would help this. And I, and I think that this program really does help. Um, we have professional musicians who want to teach and, and will, will help these kids. And it makes it, I think, a whole lot easier for the, for the teacher to, uh, to assemble the ensemble. Because you don't have leadership at that age. You know, when you're starting a string program, it's basically trying to pick up a big wad of jello and not let it slip through your fingers. So if you've got that kind of help, you can, you can have some structure. There's some ability, something to hang on to. Mm -hmm. and, um, I think it's, it's uh, it's a wonderful program, um, and it, uh, you can really move them quite quickly. I mean, you can give them a taste of what the end goal is. You can play along, ghost along with them, and they've got something to hang on to. But it's, mm -hmm. it can be too much early on for them to get any real meaningful group experience. And if the better you can do that, the more success these programs can have. So I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would say um, on both ends of it, have been on both ends of it at this point. Like it's the the most touching like thing has just been watching the members of the orchestra who come in um, build relationships with the students, and I've seen that with them coming into my classroom. Um, Kent was a teacher who came into my classroom and. Um, 
you know, just the students asking like, well, is Mr. Kent coming today? Or, you know, what, when is he, when is he going to be back to, um, to the summer, um, helping coordinate one of the after, uh, summer programs for a community center we work in. Just seeing that relationship with student and teacher is just heartwarming and, and it's real. Mm -hmm. And it's, there are all different levels of musicianship that, that we work with at different schools, some beginners, some more advanced. Um, but the consistent thing is that that dedication to the student as as a as a human. Mm -hmm. It's really really beautiful. Yeah, I like to add just uh, because I was part of this program since the beginning when we started at Anna Starts uh, with teachers and mm -hmm. and seeing from you know like grow to where we are now. That of course there's always room to to keep growing, but to see the the evolution of it is it's quite fantastic. And and like Rebecca said, that the relationships that you build with the students and see them grow and, and you know like start kids at six years old and then you see them become teenagers is is quite interesting and, and it's very rewarding. So it's been a fantastic thing to be part of this program room. Yeah, that's what some of your students, Ava, I think Gabby was the, like the, one of your first ones. And now she's come right. back as like the head student telling all the other kids what to right. do. And <laughs> she's in high school. So, yeah. Especially with Gabby's case, because she was one of my most challenging as a teacher, because I had to find a way to explain her. It wasn't one of those students that gets things right away. Mm -hmm. And so I had to like try different ways to, to make her understand the violin and mm -hmm. finally I got to it and and she was so successful and, and got into it like very heavily but at the beginning it was it was tricky yeah and I think that's one of the things as, as teachers we don't talk about so much and it's like how you have to adjust to each student you don't mm -hmm. just teach one way you have to to find a way to, to get feedback from the kid that is understanding what you're telling and of course the execution. And so we as teachers have to, to be flexible and malleable in, with each student that we teach because we have to find the find way that hook. we can. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're stand by me, if you will. Exactly. They're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're Star Trek. Yeah. Um, nice, nice yeah. Yeah, I, You know, and I still love the song. It's a uh, it's yeah sorry <laughs> I know it's, it's kind of intermediate you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well how about uh kurt i'm wondering if you can share with us because i know you've done uh soul strings at a couple different sites um kurt for a while you were hopping around and filling in for many folks when you first joined us, the LPO, so you you got to see a couple different places where we do um, soul strings. Would you be able to share with us? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. So, so soul strings is a program that reaches out to uh, children and other adults who really can benefit from classical music in some way. Um, the, the the one that I'm most uh, comfortable speaking about is St. Michael's because I was spending every week there, and um, St. Michael's Special School. Um, is a, a school in the lower garden district that has special needs students and we go there and we work with um, a somebody who's incredibly talented at, at teaching uh, music to these kids and there's a string quartet two violins cello and viola and we're able to you know single out the viola and they know exactly what the viola is and they know that it's lower than a violin and know what it sounds like and they know the personality associated with with that viola and then we're able to connect to them musically and really help their non-musical skills as well through music and i think that's probably a common thread through soul strings um, whether it be adults or children or just anybody Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, and I'm 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 feeling that the uh, for that program in particular, I know there's there's just such a greater there's an even greater need now for live music. It has such I I've seen the program grow at 
St. Michael's in particular, because some of the kids, what's different at that site, I think, than some of the other sites is it's the same kids that have gone through the program a couple years in a row. So to see them grow and it's, you're really working on, um, sometimes it's just like fine and gross motor skills or, um, or language skills and, and memory games. And just to see the kids, you are seeing their development through that program is a really mm-hmm. beautiful thing. Um, yeah, music, so, yeah. music definitely encapsulates so many different skills, um, language, social skills, and it, I think to see a kid who hasn't, you know, for a whole year, you have never heard them speak. And then in the second year you're teaching them, they speak through music for the first time and you hear their voice for the first time. It's very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. And it's because of music. Right. Yeah, the reaction, I, I recall there was another, another one of the places, I think, Ava, maybe you're, you've been at Magnolia. That was one mm-hmm. of our, our pilot uh, programs. And that's a center that has adults with developmental disabilities. And it was incredible. Catherine Wood was our music therapist for that program. Shout out to Catherine, who also helped develop that entire program for us. Um, But there there was a big circle of about 20 adults and they're playing and she had them, um, I think playing tambourines. And there was a gentleman that like dived down because he had dropped his tambourine and grabbed it and then the lady over there, Mary McDuff, she came, she's like, he hasn't moved and picked up an instrument in like the past three years that he's been at this center. And I was like, all right, we're doing something. Like that was, that was her big, I don't know. It's just like, you guys have to keep coming back. So there's been some really powerful experiences through that program. And so that's with all of these programs that we talked about, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can find new ways this year, um, you know, like I said before, this committee is no stranger to challenges because we've often figured things out <laughs> with pennies. I'm sure we can do it um, and get really creative. We've already had some uh, really creative discussions on how we can get our, our field trip programs online and get those to the schools. And, um, and really what, I, what I've really enjoyed about working with all of you is you all have the attitude of how can we better serve our communities? So if there are folks out there who want to write to us, what, what can you, what would you love to see from the LPO next? Um, whether it's from the education and community engagement or artistic department, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. We're here for the city um, and for the region. So, um, so send us your ideas. You know, we, uh, we've done crazy things like all been on barges and boats and uh, you know, we've, we perform, you know, our, our early explorers, we've had uh, people marching around with Pied Pipers, students following, you know, around, we've, we'll pack them into Mahalia Jackson up to the rafters. So, well, we do crazy things, but um, I think, I think it, it works. It's all about experimentation, finding out what's going to work. So we're not going to stop this year, even though there's a pandemic, we're just going to figure out a new way to do it. Mm-hmm. I think um, more important. Yeah this, this uh, remote learning to help them engage more. And I think that music, the more we can, we can supplement the curriculum with, with more contact, I think it can only help that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, Samantha, just a quick, a, a quick uh, note to that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> since uh, I've been teaching online a little bit through Zoom a few mm-hmm. students, and I, I have to say that I mean, for every student that is not only studying music or everything, it's, it's such a challenge to do this through this. And I have to sh- a big, have a big shout out to all the students that are going through this pandemic, learning through things online, especially uh, my violin students. It's just, it's crazy how the willingness to want to do something, it makes it happen. Mm-hmm. So I think that mentality and, and seeing how it, it can work, I think that the concept that we have to have for, for our programs, because it's possible, we just have to figure out the way. And of course, there's been talks and plans of how we're gonna go on with this, but it's exciting because it's, it's yes, it's a challenge, but uh, it, it brings creativity at, mm-hmm. at its best. Like we, we have like 
a big field of opportunity. So I, I think it's it's very exciting and it, it could be overwhelming, but it's I, I like to be optimistic and think that it's very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Eva, I just shout out to you too, because to to create that sort of engagement speaks of of great a great teacher. And I think that there are some really excellent you're I mean, you're an example of of all of the excellent teachers I think that we have um, in this program and, and just you. that dedication to the children as their whole. Um, and as we move forward, just as you said, in, into our online learning, our, our theme is going to be, you know, bringing out your inner child and fun and, and how can we, how can we um, supplement, as Kent said, um, mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff with the joy of music. Yeah. Well, I think that put a really nice bow on our, our conversation. I don't know. Do you guys have anything else you want to share this evening? Well, I'd like to say thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for, for being such a great, you know, you are really the glue that puts all this together and oh, not thanks, only the education, but in the LPO. So I want to thank you publicly because you deserve mm. All the tears. So thank oh, you. So thanks. Thank you. Well, it's real. It really is a team effort. I mean, it's following our, our musician governed model. This orchestra wouldn't be where it is without the people in it. So I can plan all I want, but I'm not carrying out all of these activities by myself. So, so don't go giving me all that credit. It's, it's you all. <laughs> so thank you for all your excellent work. And thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm sorry we had a little bit of a delay there, but you know, we're going <laughs> to. We will overcome. That's the whole theme of this, this whole uh, evening and, and the future weeks. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you, whether it's outside at a parks program or here online, um, LPO will be, will be there for you in the fall. So thanks everyone. We're gonna sign off for the evening. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.